All right, everyone, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. I am bringing back one of my favorite guests, Mindy Hebner. I'm going to let you introduce yourself um, in a minute. Before we get started, though, I want to give you guys my um, just a background of how I got to know Mindy and how we work together so you can kind of get your head around where we're coming from with today's topic. So um, I, I'm always an open book about I feel it's really important for anybody that is in a coach service based industry like I am to always be getting coached and working on themselves as well. And I have a number of different coaches that I use for various parts of my business. And Mindy is my personal, I, I just say my personal, like I own you. <laughs> she works with many other people. Um, but Mindy is my mindset coach for lack of a, I, I call her many other things. Um, but she is my go to to help me get out of my own way get out of my head. Because um, I think we're all our world's worst, probably roadblocks. Would you would you agree with that one, Mindy? We definitely <laughs> can be. We definitely yeah. can be. Yes. Um, and I also feel like she is, I don't know if she'll feel the same way or not, but I kind of feel like she was like my like separated at birth kind of soul sister that we oh, were destined to, to be together at some point. So um, she reached out uh, initially with a comment when I was asking in my community, Hey, what do people want to hear more on in the podcast? And she brought up habit stacking. And then a bunch of other people chimed in was like, Oh, yes. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm going to bring in, I, I can talk about it from my very left brain math oriented structure process perspective and share kind of how I use it. But I knew having Mindy here to talk about the real what's going on in our brains. Why does it work? What are some good tips and tricks if you're getting started with it and all of that? So before we dive in there, Mindy, why don't you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself and then we'll get this party started. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the space here too. I'm so excited to, I love being a guest on your podcast. I'm so excited to be back again, honored. And yes, definitely separated at birth, soul sisters. <laughs> I am Mindy Hebner, unlocker of magic is what I like to say. I love that. Yeah, and I, I absolutely, mindset strategy habits is what I work on with all my clients. Um, it is, people will say, oh, mindset, is that the number one thing? I say yes. Now, is that the only thing? No, but when we are our own roadblock, like all the strategies in the world, all the beautiful ways that you teach us to implement things. If we've decided that we don't have time and we are embodied in the identity of a woman who doesn't have time and can't be a planner and can't have structure, we will never be the woman who has planning and structure. And so that's why I feel that mindset is so important. And along with that is, is learning how to reframe and find different meaning for things. And really, who am I being? That's always a question, you know. Mm -hmm. um, who am I being? What is the identity I'm embodying in this? And that makes a huge difference. And so I'm also really an identity shifter for people, helping them, guiding them along to shift the identity. I say people, mostly women. I work with women in business and helping them to create the extraordinary business and life that they were made for. Like you have everything you need on the inside of you. I'm going to help you unlock that magic so you can step into it fully. Love that. And I will say for people who, if you've never worked with um, a mindset coach like Mindy, it was a big, um, I mean, I, I talk about this often I, you know, as the black, white math major that I am, it always looks so woo woo and whatever, but I, I almost feel like you undersell what you do because for me, the, the biggest thing I've learned in working with you is that, um, that reframing on does it have, okay, so I keep, I keep hitting this over and over and over again. And you're always helping me find a new way of saying it doesn't always have to mean this. Could it mean, could we put another meaning to this? And that's something very new for me. Um, and you've helped me already in so many ways with that. And mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's, it's amazing. We could go down that road all day, but we're going to talk about habit stacking. So I'm going to share my very left brain interpretation of it and some ways that I use it and why I like it. 
And then I want to hear more your foundational backgrounds with it. Um, And if anybody's interested in, I I personally think Atomic Habits is an amazing book around this. Um, And I was going back through it before our call to, we're both holding it up, isn't that? (laughs) If you're listening, um, we're both holding up the book and we've got it all highlighted. That's so funny. Um, James Clear is like, (laughs) oh, sitting at the altar of his feet. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes. Yeah, but I've read it. I'm on my third pass of it and I've listened to it twice over the last several years and I get such different things out of it but it's it's a gem and if you really want to deep dive in habits definitely the book is is a must have but habit stacking is really the way I look at it is okay there's a new habit I want to start or potentially get rid of you know either way and so what am I already doing that's a true habit on autopilot that I can now say okay after I like brush my teeth after I brush my teeth, I'm going to do X or I'm trying to think of some other just routine things. You know, after I make a cup of coffee, I'm going to do five push-ups or whatever that might be. So it's taking something you're already doing on autopilot and then attaching a new habit. So in that way, you're stacking it. Um, and one of the tips that I've I intent kind of intuitively did on my own before I ever read this book. Anytime I'm introducing a new habit, one that I know is going to be hard, I always like to tie and try some some kind of reward to it. So Mm -hmm. it makes it super amazing. And I I know you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about my smoothie bowls, but there is a particular thing I do on Fridays with my business that's like not the stuff I love. And so I get my smoothie bowl and I get to eat it while I do that on Fridays. So that's like my reward way of getting into this new weekly habit for my business as well. So it's like, I'm rewarding myself, but I'm also doing it in a healthy way because the exactly. smoothie bowl is, is good. So exactly. those are just, and I'm, I'm on a new habit stack as I'm going through readjusting my morning routine as well. So we might talk about that in a little bit, but would love to hear more of what's going on in our brains when you are helping people implement a new habit and and start into habit stacking, what do you tell them? Well, uh, the why is super important. Like if we're not married to our why, we, it, it, I want to quote you from James Clear, the brain's tendency to prioritize the present moment means you can't rely on good intentions. When you make a plan to lose weight, write a book, learn a language, you're actually making plans for your future self. Mm -hmm. And when you envision what you want your life to be, it's easy to see the value of taking actions with long-term benefits. We all want better lives, futures for ourselves. However, when the moment of decision arrives, instant gratification usually wins. We trade this all the time, instant gratification for long-term satisfaction, yep. which is why your smoothie bowl with the things that you're doing that aren't your favorite thing in your business is so successful. Yeah. It's, and, and I'm going to say to you that that's not only habit stacking, that is temptation bundling as Ooh, well. I like that. What's temptation yes. bundling? So Katie Milkman is the doctor, I think she's a PhD. I don't, I didn't, I, I recently heard her on a um, podcast um, on NPR, something about the brain. I can't, how our brain works, the brain. I don't know, I'm a junkie for all those kinds of yeah. things since that's what I do, right? And she talked about some several studies that she did. She's written a book, go, go look her up, Katie Milkman. She talked about habit stack, or excuse me, temptation bundling. So her deal was, I get home from school. She's like PhD student. I'm exhausted. All I want to do is Netflix binge and, or like, like read a book and just dive into an audible book. And I don't want to do anything else. And I'm wasting time. I have homework to do. I'm not working out. There's all these things that I want to do. How can I, how can I motivate myself? How can I get moving on this? So temptation bundling looks like this. The only time I'm going to have a smoothie bowl is when I do these Mm. X things in my business on Friday morning. The only time I'm in a Netflix binge is when I'm walking on the treadmill so that I am not wasting time. I'm getting the instant gratification. And here's what's happening in my brain, right? So that's the logical outside like kind of a thing. Our brain deletes, distorts, and generalizes based on 
what we believe about ourselves and our, our beliefs, period. And so if I believe I'm a time waster, because I think a thought, it creates a belief, it becomes an identity and I have habits that reinforce it all the time. You believe that you are a, and I'm just going to insert these words for you, a master of productivity and planning. And therefore you have habits that prove that over and over and over and over again, period. Mm -hmm. Right? So that works. Your brain is that powerful. It will literally reinforce what you believe. This is where identity and shifting meaning comes in because we then, if we believe we could never, right? If we believe we're a time waster, we have proof of it. We're laying on the couch every night, Netflix binging, not getting work done, not getting studying done, not getting, not working out, not moving our body, not doing the things we say we want to do, right? We're just going to keep proving that to ourselves. So in order to change that filter, our RAS, right? We need some motivation. So doing a little bit of this instant gratification combined with the long-term success is super helpful. It like hits all those places. Yeah. We, it gives us that shot of, you know, serotonin, dopamine, all the good feeling things because we're, I just did this last night. It was just really funny. I just temptation bundled last night. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that I love the Twilight series. Oh, me too. <laughs> I still, I'll, if it's on, I'm watching it. <laughs> and I'm rewatching it and I'll reread it. And yep. I'm a totally team Edward. I'm such a freak. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew we were separated at birth. <laughs> and last night I was like, I'd really like to just, I had a client. I have a late night client on, uh, whatever night was last night. And I was like, I need, I, I really need to move my body because I only got a little bit of time today and I want to, I really like to move my body. I'm like, I'm going to get on the treadmill and, and. I'm going to watch Netflix and I'm going to watch Twilight, right? And I was temptation bundling and loving it, like feeling so good. It's like the smoothie, right? I don't even feel guilty. The beauty of temptation bundling is the guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. Like we get to satisfy that guilty pleasure and we get to check that box because everybody also not everybody, most people have that like satisfaction when we go check. Check, oh check. yeah, absolutely. Right, and I'm gonna say your people have that satisfaction. <laughs> like the, the people that are Megan fans, they, they like the check boxes. I, we, I mean, that's why I start every list with make a list. So as soon as it's done, I can check something <laughs> off, you Exactly, because it's this like amazingly, you know, wonderful, it is done, yeah. right? Like we get this, and so be it kind of a thing. There's just so much that happens there. Number one, every time we do that, we prove to our brain, we can get ish done, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we are that woman. So we're changing our identity bit by bit when we do those things. And the brain, like it, start, it starts to rewire itself. It starts to move in that direction. Yeah. So anytime we can have it stack or temptation bundle, and you, you talked about habit stacking too, like what's going on there. Well, we're taking an automatic already and we're just sliding a new thing. It's almost like sneaking in the back door, right? Where our primal brain, which wants to stay in love, safety, and belonging, which means the known, it wants to stay in the known, even if it's not safe anymore, even if we don't love it anymore, like it wants to stay in the known because who will I be if I don't like go to my Sunday dinner with my family and eat until I want to throw up every week? Like, who will I be? Who will I be if I'm not that person? Like your brain keeps you in these illogical places for being a, you know, thing that we use for logic. And so we get to start showing it who we will be and, and what the benefits will be. So we get to start putting those habits together, slide them in the, in the back door right there so that we get to stay in the known. We're, we're almost like sneaking past our brain. We're staying in the known, but we're shifting it. And then the filter, the RAS, the things are coming through are proving to us that the unknown's okay. Like, like we're not jumping, you know, from this, we're not, we're not moving. We're not moving from Wisconsin to Illinois. We're just walking over the border yeah. at a time. And, and the brain can be on board with that. What I love about, you know, 
habit stacking and I resisted it for a long time. And I, I think a lot of, I know I've met a lot of other people that are more naturally inclined, inclined the way I am, which is if I'm going to embark on something, it's like all in baby, all or nothing. Right. And I, I mean, I deal with this with a lot of clients. Okay. I need to get better with my time management. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to master monthly planning, weekly planning, but you know, all of this all at once. I'm like, no, actually you aren't. That's why I designed my program the way it is. Cause, and I, I laugh because I know I'm the pot calling the kettle black a little bit with that, but realizing when we do that, I'm going to scrap everything and start from scratch. How often are we successful, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe two Mm -hmm. days. I'm going to start exercising. I'm never going to eat another piece of processed food again. I'm going to make my own nut butters. I'm going to do toxic household. I'm going to do all the things. And then it's overwhelming and we stop. Too much. And this is why I love with the habit stacking. I'm like, okay, what is one thing I can do one thing I can think of, I could do every day or every week that sets me up for success. That's small. And then what am I going to attach it to that I'm already doing? Mm-hmm. And when I was at, we were just on a group coaching call a while back with a bunch of women in my top program. And, uh, she shared that she was really struggling with the weekly planning. She's like, it just seems like, I don't want to do that on Sunday. At first it doesn't have to be on a Sunday, but as we talked through it, I said, well, what about like, the reason why I love my weekly planning session is I go, depending upon the weather, sometimes it's a cup of hot chocolate. Sometimes it's whatever, in whatever time of day I'm doing it, I create this amazing experience. Mm-hmm. When I sit down to do, I have my favorite pens. I've got my good drinks. Sometimes I've got a snack. I might put on good music. And all of a sudden these light bulbs went off or a bunch of them are like, Ooh, so she had this big thing about like her reward was guacamole. She's like, I can order guacamole and have it when I do my weekly planning. It's like, yes. And then now let's see, can we take it one step further? Is there something you do every week, either at the start or the end of a week that you're already used to doing that we can attach the weekly planning onto to actually stack it instead of now you're trying to find this whole new time to do it. Exactly. Um, and so that's where I feel like the benefit is you're, you're set up a million times more for success when you can start yes. that way, instead of the, I'm going to go throw everything out of my kitchen and I'm never eating a piece of junk food again. And I'm going to run a marathon or, you know, whatever that yes. looks like. And with time management, I I'm always, people are surprised when I tell them, no, we're not going to do it all right away because then it will be, it will be more overwhelming than you already are. And so where is one place we can start? So we can start with weekly planning, but we can start with just a three-step process and later work up to the 10 step process. And as we do that, here's what's happening in our brain. And we, I, I started to talk about the why and totally circumvented it. This is vital to like, like really being married to our, what is going to open up for me when I make this decision for me, like we start to build our self-esteem and, and that's what you're saying about the three step and why, why doing it in smaller increments, we're building our self-esteem, we're building our self-confidence. Every time we prove to past self that we showed up, every time we show up, we prove to future self, like we can do it. We can get through what life hands us and come out on the other side. Like it's not always pretty, it's not always simple, right? We can do it though. And every time we do that, we rewire that in our brain as well to say like, we are resilient. We are doers. Like this is, and so what are the gains? What, what's going to open up for me when I do weekly planning? And I, I love that question because I know for myself before you converted me, right? It was like structure is a prison. Yeah. Like, no, I can't say what I'm going to be doing. Like, and then there was this epiphany of what's going to open up for me, everything. There's so much freedom and structure. I have so much more time when I structure my time than thinking, oh, I got plenty of time. I don't need to. And then you're not guilty because you can enjoy the times you're not working because you already know you've got time set aside for that. Exactly. And enjoy exactly. Each other so much and more. This, this is right. Like that's also, that's your brain deleting, distorting, generalizing, shifting identity over to, I gave a new meaning. I reframed what structure actually means because I, because we decide what something means based on past experiences, based on what our parents told us it meant, based on what the world tells us it means. I mean, constructs of beauty, like anything, right. We just like, 
it's given to us and we go, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, this, that's what it means. We decide there things need to be a struggle. We decide things need to be difficult. We, we just decide and that there's no shame in that. So please, if you're no one shame themselves, this is curiosity. Have I decided that this needs to be hard? How, when did I make this decision? And even if you can't remember when I get to make a new decision, like I get to find some ease in this. I get to give a new meaning to structure it's not a prison, right? Like it actually is freedom. And, and even when I say the words now, I can feel what I used to feel. It, it's just this beautiful, like I see this little movie play and it felt constrictive, like literally like thinking about planning felt constrictive. And now it just, my chest is just wide open. So silly, like sound of music, Julie Andrews spinning on the mountaintop. Like, <laughs> and that's like, yeah, that's my brain being a hundred percent on board with that. That's how we feel because that's my identity. That's, yeah. that's the identity that I am choosing because I know my why. So knowing our why is vital. Now, when we do those little bits like that, we're, we're widening, we're uh, changing the filter, the RAS when we just do it in increments and, and it's like foundational building blocks, right? I mean, well, if we start lifting weights, start running, start doing any of those things, I don't, we immediately go and use the 30 pound dumbbells. Like that's not, you know, I can use them now, but when I started, I was at threes and fives, right? And we build up to that. We're building our, our muscle, so to speak. Every time we have it stacked, every time we make a choice for that long-term satisfaction and habit stacking as well as temptation bundling, those get us started. Those things get the process started. Long-term, we're shifting identity, period. What I love about the, the getting started and the temptation bundling as well, and he touches, James touches on, I, I talked to Jay, like, like I know James, James. is the author of uh, Atomic hey, Habits. <laughs> what he touches on that's so good is particularly with why I think that temptation bundling is so key is usually these habits we're putting in, in place we're not going to see instant success, right? I mean, hardly ever. I ate a salad. Why haven't I lost 10 pounds? Or I did weekly planning. Why, why did I still not get everything done this week? Well, it's the <laughs> first time you, you know, we're learning, right? Right. And particularly in the world we're in right now, instant gratification. If we can tie that reward, that, that level of satisfaction, that temptation piece to the habit so that we can get some short-term gratification and wins when the habit we might be bringing on is something. And I mean, I will tell people, give it four, six rounds of weekly planning sure. in the basic mode before you even look at advanced. Yeah. And so what can you, what can you stack with this new habit to give you gratification along the way? We mm -hmm. um, you know it's a lot easier to think about when people think about health and fitness, we know that takes a long time. And I kind of, I'm on a big reset. I've started a new health and fitness thing for myself this week. And, you know, <laughs> do my clothes look at me? Of course not. It's been five days, right? right, right. But I have a few little gratifications along the way that I'm putting in place to then get some wins until the longer term successes start to show up that then motivate us to keep doing it. Exactly, exactly. And the, the, the part of another reason that habit stacking is so helpful for us is because when we take those autopilot things like you talked about, when you were talking about like make my coffee and do this and I was thinking about like automatically we're all use the bathroom, you know, and like this is a constant and it happens more often than just brushing our teeth, right? Like I probably brush my teeth two or three times a day some days, but for most people, like that's a morning thing or that's a night thing. So I was thinking when you were saying that, um, when we use a bathroom, we have an opportunity. There's nine times out of 10, a mirror, like to say, either do a gratitude practice or, or an affirmation practice where we look in the mirror, we can say three things, we can be thankful for three things. This could be uh, an amazing habit stacking that's going on because you, like, this is a constant in our lives, right? Yeah, yeah. We're getting away from it. And so what could you, even if it's an affirmation for your listeners about planning, like, yeah. you know, if it's, it, 
it's reinforcing that. It's an it's a like gratitude. Say, I am a productive person. Exactly. I control my calendar. My calendar doesn't control me. Exactly. So actually, yeah. I love that. Look in the mirror and just say that to yourself. This is called mirror work. This is self love. Like this is us like literally looking at ourselves and saying this back to us, and then ah, you get to check the identity because if we're saying something we don't believe then we get to just dial the affirmation down until we prove that to ourselves. So you said, uh, I am a productive person. And, and if, if some people who are brand new, right, to, to being productive, maybe they look in the mirror and they go, I'm a productive person. Wah, wah, wah. Like, you know, the BS meter goes off. Yeah. Okay. I'm the kind of woman who can be productive. Yeah. I'm the kind of, I am becoming a productive person. Really, I mean, like, I'm learning how to be productive. Exactly. I'm learning yeah. how to be productive. And so you can start a little more neutral from that place. And then the more you say that and the more you prove it, because remember what we think and then believe, right? It starts to become a belief. And then we start to take action to prove that that goes on autopilot. You can look around your whole life and see where that's happening. Right. Yeah. So then we'll start creating that habit too. Like, well, I'm a productive person. I'm learning to be productive. What habits am I picking up? What am I doing? Like, where am I, where's my filter letting through the proof that this is me? And then we get to start seeing those places. So we're saying it to affirm it. And then we've got the three things that we're doing, right? To implement this planning. And is it, is it an end of the week celebration as well? Like where we get to the end of the week and it's not about, here's the thing about outcomes and habits, right? We want to, our ultimate goal is to be, become the, the identity. This is becoming the people who do these things. It's not, it is the weekly planning. It's that result. And it's being the woman who weekly plans and does all the other things, right? Like, and, and I, I said, does all the other things, but also who sits on the couch? Like that's not yeah, all, that, but that is part of all the other it's things. It's not all about doing care right? yourself. About yeah. being. The point exactly. is being, who are we being? Who are we becoming? This is how we have it stack and temptation bundle for success is we develop the identity of. And that's the whole point. And James is very clear on that. Ha ha, James clear. Very <laughs> clear on that. It is, it's, we're not, we don't want to run a 5K. We want to become a runner. Because yeah. that's a whole different ball game. Focus on the identity, not the goal. Because then you, the goal ends, you're like, I ran it, now what? Yes, yeah. yes. The goal comes along when we focus on the identity. Because if I'm a productive person, then... <clears throat> What do I think? What do I do? How much rest do I get? What kind of books do I read? How do I spend my free time? Cause I'm allowed to, you know, be, have free time. Right. And you know, who do I follow and what do I listen to? And how do I talk to myself and all, all those kinds of things. That's where the identity comes in to that. That's how we rewire the brain. Identity is key in our things and these habit stacking and temptation bundling. Those are the springboard. Those, those move us forward in starting to shift the identity. And I would encourage anybody who's listening today to give yourself two pieces of homework. Um, and I'm gonna be doing both. One is pick an affirmation for yourself that you're gonna start saying in the mirror every time you go to, well, not while you're going to bed, when you're done. Um, I've never thought of that. So I would encourage everyone to do that. And if you are comfortable sharing it, by all means, when, whenever you're listening to this, tag this episode, share it out there and, and put out what your affirmation is going to be. Because I think if we all just did that, that would, I mean, how much transformation would that be? That would be incredible. And then secondly, think about what is, what is that thing you're constantly saying to yourself? I wish I was, or like for me, I'm always, I wish I was more patient. You know, I wish that I was, I wish I was better at planning. I wish I was more organized. I wish I was had a healthier, whatever, whatever is the loudest in your brain and find what is one small thing that you can do just one, we're not going to just one. And what habit are you going to stack that onto? And that may take some time to think through what that's going to be for you. And it's trial and error. Um, I know sometimes like this week I tried 
habit stacking a new health uh, fitness thing. And I, after day three, I'm like, this ain't working. So now I'm stacking it onto something else. And I'm like, oh, I'm liking this much better. So give yourself permission to test, tweak, yes. test, tweak. You don't have to I, get it right the first time. And I love what you said. So everybody hear what Megan said. She said, I tried and I was like, mm, I don't like the word try. She didn't just try because try to pick up a pen. You I know, did it. Up. Exactly. Yeah. I she, tested it. What I like to say is she tried it on. Yes. She literally put it on. She put it in her schedule. She did it three days. She checked the data, like knowing what you want, implementing the action, checking the data. We check the data and then being willing to change, right? If you check the data and it doesn't work, okay, great. How can I make it work? What, how do I get to show up differently? All of those things, identity, ident you're shifting your identity every time you do that to, to become that problem solver, that, that master of productivity, that, I love that. Thank, I'm so glad that you said, you tried it on and it didn't work. Like you, yeah. it wasn't right. But there's I know it can, that game. I just gotta find it, yeah. It's not, there was no failure, it was data, right? That's the thing, it was data to know then the next time. Oh, yeah. how, how, do I get, how do I get to make this happen instead? I love that, I love that. Good, well, yay. See, I learned from you all the time. So Mindy, where can everybody catch up on what, what you've got going on these days? I love Instagram, <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Mindy Heavner. Um, and guys, follow her stories. I, I get so much inspiration out of all. I mean, you put so much out there for us. It's Thank amazing. You. So Thank definitely. And I'll have, um, I'll have Mindy's links here in the show notes. Um, but yeah, she's out there on Instagram at Mindy Heapner. Yes. And I do a series how to Fridays on, on my Instagram as well. I am on Facebook. You can find me anywhere at Mindy Heapner. Uh, but Instagram is definitely where I like to hang out. I have a lot of fun there. And uh, if you follow a how to Friday, if you show up on a how to Friday and there is a how to that you want to know, just write it in there, how to uh, anything with your brain, any way of reframing new meaning, anything like that. Uh, I've been having a really good time doing this series now all summer. And so it's been fun to watch. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so oh, much for having me Thank you for here. your time. Such a pleasure. Really. Makes me sad to have to hang up, <laughs> but I know I'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll be back next week, everyone.